Hey guys, um, I've just now gotten around to having internet again in my house, which is great. Um, I want to go over a few things as you start your drawings this week. Um, one, uh, working with tone paper. If you didn't buy a tone paper, you can tone your own paper just by using your vine. Or if you want to go super duper dark, you can use your compressed. And again, I'm using my hand, but you can use a paper towel if you don't want to get messy. Now, one thing I noticed in a lot of your drawings last week was that you guys tried to draw the whole thing, dropped it right in the center. Uh, you don't want to do that because the smaller you draw, the harder it is to get those details, especially when you're working with something like this thick. Um, also, it isn't really interesting compositionally. Uh, so I grabbed uh, my Space Jam VHS tape here, a, uh, a can of spray paint, and this cube here, and some fabric. So you don't have to do fabric this week, um, but if you want to get a jump start, because you will be required to do it in your drawings next week, and it is incredibly hard, and you want to have the most practice you can get with it, um, we'll have a homework assignment with uh, with fabric to give you more um, experience with that. So we're gonna look here and try and find an area that we like. I think I'm gonna cut it off right here. So we don't, we don't want anything just like kissing the edge. We don't wanna leave awkward space. When I talk about positive and negative space, that's what I mean. Just leaving the tiniest bit or, or too much in the, in the foreground. Um, it's odd. So I'm going to do my gestural drawing here on the spray can. Also, uh, you don't want to spread your items apart. You kind of want some overlap to show and give the illusion of depth and space. And I can tell I, I, I like where I zoomed in on this, but there's not a lot of fabric in here. So I'm just gonna go move this a little bit. So we have some fabric to play with. There we go. Okay. All right. And I did end up leaving space in there, um, but I kind of like it. It's not kissing the edge. And then I made it go off this side and this side. So let me go in here and uh, start shoring up my work. Also, you want to draw bigger so you can use your whole arm to draw. When you, um, when you just use your wrist or just your fingers, you tend to get these chicken stra scratch things. You want these nice, nice uh, fluid lines. And you don't wanna lose the, the shape of things. I, I, I noticed uh, a lot of you, your, your spheres and your ellipses would start to lose uh, form and kind of taper off. So make sure you're paying attention to everything making sure it matches up so you don't um, flatten out your image. All right, so that looks pretty straight on. Come back here, put in my cube. And I noticed a lot of you guys were having trouble with this as well. So remember you can eye things like, here, let me see if I can do it to the camera. Just sort of put your, uh, your ruler or your drawing, whatever, you can put it right against the line, see how it is, take it back to the page. You can do this with angles as well. 
and uh, breaking everything down. If you wanted to make it simpler, you could make a triangle shape up here, extending off that, and then break it down piece by piece. All right. So we're going to talk about fabric last, but I am going to start putting stuff in. All right, so directional shading. This will help you to not flatten out your images. You want to shade in the direction that your form is going. You see, I'm making, I'm making this curve, taking it all the way around. And if I were to go up here, it kind of goes like that, but more so that direction. I'm fast and loose. I know a lot of you might feel very uptight, but I'm telling you this, this is, this is the way to get things down. Cause when you have those 15 minute drawings, I don't mean just draw for 15 minutes. I mean, do an entire drawing start to finish in 15 minutes as fast as humanly possible. So it's, it's not gonna benefit you doing the chicken scratches with your arm. You want those, you want those big strokes. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about besides directional shading is actual shading. Okay, talked about those things, awesome. We're right on track. So I got this basic uh, shape mapped out here. See that, that vine's gonna disappear, but we want, it, we want a full range of values. So we want to get super dark where we can. And the same, same thing when you're, when you're blending in, blend in directionally. Keep that form. Don't be afraid to use the edge, use the tip, whatever you can to get a variation of line. That's also very, very, very important. Not everything has the same um, the same thickness and thinness. Some things are very small. Some, some things are very thick. Uh, where's my chalk? So I got this going on. I got this see-through thing right here. Remember we talked about going over and in, adding highlights. And when you're doing those 15 minute drawings, you probably should just quickly just right into them. It's more to get those really quick drawings are more to get the feeling and, uh, you know, a sense for the space. They're there to study. So when you have an hour, you've already mapped out you already understand the spatial differences between things. You understand the tonal changes. That way you have more time to spend on detail work. All right, so fabric is one of the hardest things you will do, uh, ever do. Um, I love it. I absolutely love doing fabric. Um, I get lost into it. Uh, there's been times I've been doing this demo in class and all of a sudden 30 minutes have passed and they're just like, Spencer, like uh, <laughs> enough, please. Um, but I mean, there's so much detail in this fabric. And this is just a piece of extra cloth. You can take a t-shirt, you can take a dish towel, 
Um, you can throw your bedding on, draw that, uh, any piece of fabric, doesn't matter. We don't wanna draw every individual fold. We wanna pick out the strongest points, sort of map it out much the same way. We're just quickly mapping out the folds of the fabric. Okay, so next steps. I like to get the darker pieces in because this will help you in the long run. Don't put any of your highlights in yet. and don't blend it in yet. It should look about like this. So since we have the tone paper, we have a middle tone. Um, so we don't have to worry about building that up. Um, we can work off that. So I have my white chalk here. I'm gonna take this along the fold of that dark, that super dark piece. And what that's gonna do, so that's gonna give us a little bit of blending. And then we blend it all together and it creates this great curve. gives us our edges. We don't even have to draw those out because we've blended them right in. Any step you can learn to uh, meld together into, into uh, simplifying it, do it. Because that gives you more time to focus on other things. And there we go, quick, easy fabric. And then we can go in and put our, our bright brights in there. Don't get lost in the folds, it'll happen. Don't try and overcomplicate it. That's why the gestural drawing is so important. You're capturing uh, the feeling of it, the weight of it, um, not so much uh, every little aspect of it. So I'm gonna go over here. So we have a little bit more finished piece to leave you guys with. And then of course, we can either lighten the background, darken the background, or if we build this up enough, we can leave that middle tone. So we can X out a step, but we'd have to push this way further. So what I'm gonna do for sake of time, if you were having a 15 minute drawing and you were like, oh man, I gotta do that space jam and all the, all the parts and that, what am I gonna do? I have two minutes left. Well, selective editing is beautiful. There we go. I just created this dark space here. Nice little separation and blend it in. Crisp up the, these lines here, just with my finger. Come back up top. I'm just gonna darken it up, put a fade in. Oh, good. Remember, do not leave halos. I saw halos. You don't have to worry about getting too close to your work. You have enough control and you have the ability to edit out things with your finger or with blending. Make those lines nice and crisp. You won't lose any details. See? Oh, sorry, I'm a dork.
Let me get a nice little fade there. That's pretty close to a finished drawing. Yeah, I might make that a little bit more. All right. So in a summary, zoom in on your compositions, pick an interesting areas. Don't try to draw the whole thing in 15 minutes. That's fool's errand. Try and do at least two or three of your drawings this week um, using toned paper or tone the paper yourself. Use direct directional shading so you do not flatten out your image. So it has form and you can really feel the object. Um, shading, go super dark, go super light, have that push and pull. And then I just, I just kind of erased that last one. What was it? Well, you tell me what it was. Um, and then I've been playing in my head uh, idea. I haven't tried it on these online classes yet, but I'm thinking about doing next week's demo as a, uh, as a live Zoom. It will not be mandatory that you attend that live Zoom, um, but it would be a good time for us to all meet each other face to face and for you to ask questions directly to me. Um, and if you're interested in learning something I haven't brought up, um, we can demo some of that if we have time. And then I'll upload that and put that up on our Moodle. So let me know what you guys think about that, if anybody's interested or not. Um, other than that, drawings due on Sunday critique by Monday, um, and then we'll get into our second still electron. All right, thanks guys.